I want to share today concerning angels. Angels. In the Bible, we see that there's a lot of talk about angels. Time magazine did a poll and found out that 69% of Americans believe in the existence of angels and 46% of those believe that they have their own guardian angel. Three out of four teenagers believe in angels. So among the teenagers, the belief in existence of angels is a lot higher than among the older people. Hollywood makes movies about angels. In fact, our culture has an angel mania. They're obsessed. There's angel cards, there's angel calendars, there's angel postcards, there's angel t-shirts, there's actually angel sunglasses, there's angel conferences that people have, and there's all kinds of courses where you can get in touch with your own angel, where you can have your own connection with your spirit guide. And in fact, we see that there is an obsession. If you go to any bookstore, you will, you will find, not necessarily in Christian sections, but in the spirituality section, emphasis, books, on how to connect, and how to be led, and how to speak, and how to encounter your angel. And today we're going to debunk a lot of myths. We're going to debunk also a lot of lies. And I also believe that we're going to set some record straight concerning angels. And I believe a lot of people are also going to be blessed by this teaching. What are angels? Angels are spirit beings who assist God, especially in His work of salvation, conveying His word to human beings and attending to the needs of God's people. Let me say that again. Angels are spirit beings who assist God, especially in His work of salvation, conveying His Word to human beings and attending to the needs of God's people. And those of you that are watching me on TikTok and on Instagram, uh, we're actually dropping the notes as I'm speaking into the chat. So if you jump on YouTube and on Facebook, you will see the notes. Our moderating team is dropping those notes. We're unable to do that to Instagram at this moment, but we are doing that to YouTube and to uh, Facebook. So just go ahead, hop in over there. We would love to see you there. Angel, angelic beings are mentioned over 273 times in 34 books of the Bible. In fact, the Bible says more about angels than about demons or devils. Someone even said that there is a more mention about angel angels in the Bible than even about the Holy Spirit. And so the emphasis on angels in the Bible is huge. Billy Graham wrote a book on angels. I'm going to read a few of his quotes. I found them very interesting. He says, angels are God's secret agents. He says, again, I quote, When my time to die comes, an angel will be there to comfort me. He will give me peace and joy even at the most critical hour. Usher me into the presence of God and I will dwell with the Lord forever. Thank you, God, for the ministry of His blessed angels. David Jeremiah, he says the following, No Christian is abandoned at the moment of death. The angels are the ushers and our passage to heaven is under their escort. C.S. Lewis said in Scripture, the visitation of an angel was always alarming. It has it always begun with saying, fear not, meaning when angels visited people, it was this wasn't like, hey, what's up, yo? This was actually a pretty scary scene. Even though some places angels came as normal men, but most of the cases people were extremely alarmed. And so these different men of God mentioned and talked about angels. I want to mention to you a few uh, testimonies that I have heard about angelic beings. One of them was the story of a missionary, John Patton. He was also mentioned in Billy Graham's book and as well as you can read his story in other sources. And he mentions that one time the place where he was ministering, the natives came in and they wanted to attack their house and their mission base. And so they started to, they got on their knees with their people and started to cry out to God for help. 
as they were praying for God to protect them, they saw that these people who surrounded them to kill them, they started to leave one by one. Later on, they eventually led a lot of these people to Christ and then they led the chief of this village to Christ. And John, he asked him, he said, I wanted to know about that night where you guys wanted to attack us. What made you desert us? What made you leave and not kill us and attack the missionary base? And the chief, he says, what do you mean you want to know what made us leave? He said, I always wondered where did you get uh, the reinforcements? And the missionaries were like, Re what reinforcements? We had no reinform re reinforcements. He says, well, around the time that we were about to attack you, he said, there were these very big, powerful beings, looked like military soldiers with shining armor that started to surround your place and they appeared out of nowhere. And they started to almost like march at us and we were so scared that we ran for our life. And then John realized they were protected supernaturally by angels. I remember hearing a testimony of a young man who was abused by neighborhood older boys. And he then grew up to become a person that got involved heavily in Satanism, got involved heavily in also rock music, heavily in metal, in metal music, heavily involved in drugs, lived very, very promiscuous life, always angry, snappy, mad at everybody. He went to this diner to eat and a guy came to him, sat next to him and said, pretty much called him by his name which completely threw him in the rage. He said, you know, F any blank any blank any blank any. He cursed the guy. And this man next to him looks to him and says, the Lord was not responsible for what happened to you when you were child by older neighborhood boys. And he said, the father is waiting for you home. He touched him on the shoulder and just disappeared. This guy literally went everywhere in the bathroom and kind of all around looking. He, he thought maybe he's seeing something. He wasn't drunk or high. And they realized later on, he went to church a few days later, he got saved, that it was God who sent an angel to remind him that God is not responsible for the abuse that happened to him. And this led him to the Lord. And then later on, he became a believer. And in fact, not only a believer, he actually became a worship leader with his wife. One more testimony and this testimony comes from the book on He Came to Set the Captives Free by Rebecca Brown and I'm going to probably not quote it de details because it's been a while since I read that story but it always got imprinted in my mind. Um, there was a time when these witches decided to join forces with other witches and they started to astral project and leave their body and go and attack these Christians um, who lived in this particular home. And one of the witches who actually did that shared the testimony who then became a Christian. And she says that as they tried to project curses on this Christian home, they would see in the spirit realm they were in the spirit realm, but they would see physically the house. They would see through the windows, kids playing, family, just, just having a good time. And they would curse, pronounce all these things, but nothing would work. In fact, as they would curse, they would get weaker. And then what happened, they saw this gigantic army looking giant beings with swords, sharp, blazing, like on fire swords and these pretty much men surrounded the house and the more these witch doctors and witches who gathered from around the villages and other places tried to curse this innocent Christian simple home, the weaker they got to the point that they had to retreat to their bodies and get punished by Satan because they failed in their assignment. And this witch, who now is a Christian, shared how it planted a seed of doubt, of satanic ability to protect her as a witch who works for Satan. 
and it made her envious of Christians who are supernaturally protected by God's bodyguard on God's payroll. My friends, as a Christian, I want to let you know that God has assigned and has His angels as we're going to be talking in just a moment, breaking it down of what that means, who they are, what are they like, how can we walk in the way that sees more of God's angelic assistance in our life. The first thing I want to highlight is this. There are seven kinds of angels, if I could say. Number one is the angel of the Lord. Is actually Jesus Christ in the Old Testament showing up before He was incarnate Christ. We see these references where sometimes there was this person, this being that would show up whom the Bible doesn't call an angel or a angel. It calls him the angel of the Lord with a capital A. And then we see that this angel would speak as God. He would identify himself as God and he would exercise responsibilities of God. For example, it happened with Abraham. The Bible says three men came to Abraham. Abraham washes their feet and then it says, and the Lord spoke to Abraham. So one of those three men was actually Jesus Christ. And we, how do we know that? It's because Jesus being on this earth, He says, I was before Abraham. Meaning, I was here before on this earth. And then we see two angels go to rescue Lot and the Lord talks to Abraham. And so this was not a normal average angel. This was the angel of the Lord. Same thing happened with the burning bush. We see the angel of the Lord in the burning bush. And then we're seeing in the next verse that God said. So many scholars believe that this was Christ pre-incarnate. Meaning this was Christ showing up in the Old Testament as the angel of the Lord. Not as the one like with wings or like as the one that is on the assignment as a messenger or as a minister or as a warrior, but as God coming to show and guide and pretty much to encounter Abraham, Moses. Same thing happened with Gideon's parents. We see that this angel, the man, shows up and then the angel of the Lord shows up. We see that he touches the sacrifice. It goes in fire and flame and then he actually goes into flame and vanishes from them. And then the Gideon's, uh, excuse me, Samson's parents were like, oh my goodness, we're going to die because we've seen the Lord. They didn't say, oh, we're going to die. Why? Because we've seen an angel. We've seen God. So that means that who showed up was not an angel, but the angel of the Lord. So that's the first type of angel is the angel of the Lord speaks of Jesus in the Old Testament. The second one is the angel of light is actually Satan. Now, Satan is not the angel of light. He portrays himself as the angel of light. In 2 Corinthians 11 chapter 14, it says this, No wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. It's interesting that the reason why I want to mention Satan being an angel of light is because a lot of false religions started from a visit of an angel. Islam started because Muhammad had a visitation of an angel. This angel was the angel of light. He brought a message of falsehood. Jehovah Witness started also from a visit of an angel. Same thing with Joseph Smith who started Mormonism came from a visit of an angel. A lot of people in New Age, they're deeply connected to angels and spirit guides. A lot of automatic writing that happens where their spirit, this, this angels and a lot of focus on angels that is happening in our culture is really the angel of light who transforms himself into the angel of light is nothing else but Satan in the mask. And you need to be careful about that because before we talk about seraphims and, and, and cherubims and others, that this Jesus was showed up as the angel. And then there is 
an angel of light that transforms, him, transforms himself, which explains why a lot of these heresies and a lot of these lies that contradict the Bible, that are not glorifying Jesus Christ or declaring that He came in the flesh, are flourishing because they started by an angel of light. Now, I also must remind you, Jewish religion also started by an angel. If you remember Moses' law, he received through an angel. An angel gave Moses the law. and We're going to look at that in just a moment. But this was God's angels who brought the truth of God's Word. But the devil, he takes the form of an angel of light and he deceives nations today through angels. That's why Paul says, even if the angel comes to you and tells you a different gospel, don't believe it. Why? Because if you are obsessed, curious and running after angels, the devil has a bait for you. And the bait is this, he will transform himself into an angel of light and get you deceived, get you lured from Jesus, from the simplicity of the gospel into deception so he can separate you from Jesus and keep you in deception and bring you to spiritual death. The third type of angels in the Bible is actually angels as preachers. And I find a reference for that in Revelation chapter 1 verse 20 and Revelation chapter 3. And then we also see Revelation uh, chapter 3 and we see in pretty much in Revelation chapter 1 verse 4, Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 3, God writes to seven angels. Now, some people say that, well, these are simply put in churches. And it could be that, but if you read carefully, you will see that actually He's speaking to the pastors, to the messengers, the ones that are responsible for preaching the Word in the local church. They're called angels. Now, this does not mean that pastors are angels, okay? We're humans. We're not angels. Or your pastor is not an angel, nor, nor is he a demon, okay? And stuff. So, don't see your pastor as an angel. But in, the, in some sense of angels being messengers, your pastor, your preacher is an angel, okay? So, maybe you should call your pastor an angel. Come on, somebody. So, when I'm presenting a message, I'm to some degree fulfilling that you know, being that messenger from Christ, from God. So angels could also be pastors and preachers because they're messengers. Number four is angels with wings are seraphim and cherubim. Angels with wings. Now, we see in the Bible angels that have wings typically are two types of angels. They are the cherubim and they are the seraphim. The seraphim are only mentioned in Isaiah chapter 6 and the word seraphim pretty much means bright or fiery. Now cherubim, we see that they are mentioned in Genesis 3, 24, where a cherubim with the sword was placed to guard the Garden of Eden. So actually the first mention of angels came in Genesis chapter 3, the moment that Adam and Eve blew their chance of being in a paradise, God sends His angel, God sends a cherubim, pretty much like a bodyguard with the sword and He guards the garden, guards the way to the tree of life. And then we see also cherubim connected to the Ark of the Covenant on both sides of the Ark of the Covenant, they were covering with their wings the mercy seed. And we also see that Ezekiel saw cherubim carrying the throne of God in Ezekiel chapter 10 verse 14. So these are the two angels that we could pretty much assume that they are the ones that are flying with, they have wings. All angels probably can fly because they can move from one end to another. As we see there was an angel who was flying around declaring the gospel in Revelation, but it doesn't say that that angel had wings. So we don't, see, we don't see any angels actually showing up with wings except cherubim and seraphim. Number five type of angel is the archangel. The archangel is, Bible gives us only one archangel and that is his name is Mike or Michael. Michael, he is the leader of angels. He might be pretty much like the boss of all the angels. We don't know for sure, but what we do know is that there's only one mention of the archangel in the scripture and that is 
Michael. And this Michael, he's pretty pretty strong. He's pretty big and he's, he's really great. He has this great authority because he fights. He oversees also um, the nation of Israel and he has other responsibilities, very territorial as well. He oversees certain territories and so there's one archangel that we see. Some people say that Gabriel, Michael and Lucifer used to be like the three archangels but we don't see a mention of them being archangels. We see only one reference in the scripture to Michael being archangel and one more name of an angel is Gabriel but we don't see him being actually an archangel there's no reference. Some people speculate he is. No reference of that is given in the Bible. And then number six is angels, the ones that we're going to talk about today, messengers and ministers, meaning the ones that are sent on the assignment. Number seven is there are fallen angels. Jude chapter 1 verse 6, angels that have left their abode and they have fallen. The Bible calls Jesus, Jesus says the Satan and his angels. And so uh, these are the seven types of angels. Let's review it quickly again. Number one is the Lord Jesus Christ being the angel of the Lord. Number two is that the devil being the light, the, the angel of light. Uh, he pretty much spreads deception and heresy. Number three is the angels as preachers and ministers or pastors. Number four is angels with wings, are seraphim and cherubim. And then number five is the archangel, meaning like the top, the top ruling angel. And then number six is angels as messengers and ministers. And number seven is fallen angels. If you are receiving, if this is helping somebody, drop thumbs up right now. Let me know that you're staying engaged with me. If you are re-watching this, I want to welcome you as well and say, hey, don't forget to hit thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're watching me on YouTube or if you are re-watching on Facebook and share this with other people even if you are re-watching. Now I want to jump into seven ways angels minister. The seven ways that angels minister. Now, the verse I want to read is Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits, spirits sent forth to minister for those who inherit salvation? Hebrews 1 14. If you're taking notes, write this down. Angels are ministers of God, not of us. They are ministers to us. They are not ministers of us. What does that mean? That means that we are not in the Bible given instructions or examples of commanding angels. Now I'm about to step on somebody's toes and especially for charismatics this is going to come maybe a little shock and some of you will disagree with me. But if you give me a verse in the Bible where a Christian can tell angels what to do, I will change my opinion. But there is not one instance in the Bible where angels are bullied, bossed around and are told what to do by Christians. For example, I'm going to give you a few examples to prove that. When Lot did not want to get out from Sodom, angels instead of being controlled told by Lot what to do. Angels pretty much grabbed him and took him out. He didn't tell them what to do. He didn't command them. They controlled him. For example, in Numbers chapter 20 verse 16, I'm going to read to you. When we cried out to the Lord, He heard our voice and sent the angel and brought us out of Egypt. So the angel was sent when we cried out to the Lord. So scripturally speaking, you can't command angels. Angels are not on the payroll. You're not paying them and they're not working for you. They're working on your behalf, but they don't respond to you as their boss. Their boss is your heavenly father. Their boss is not you or I. That's why even Moses said, Moses could command Pharaoh, Moses could command Red Sea and rocks and yet he said, we cried out to God and God sent an angel and He delivered us. For example, we see same thing about Daniel. 
we see that Daniel says, Daniel chapter 6 verse 22, My God sent His angel and shut the lion's mouths. I, 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 you don't see Daniel saying, Oh yeah, when I got to the lions, I just called on my angels and my angels came and they shut the lion's mouth. That's new age. A lot of witchcraft and a lot of this worldly connection to angels is when you control angels, you manipulate angelic, you guide, you kind of like, you tell them what to do, you give them instructions, you give them pretty much like what they need to do for you. In the Bible, we don't see that. Daniel says, God sent an angel. He didn't say, I told my angel what to do. Your angel, first of all, it's not your angel. It belongs to God and that angel, my friend, responds and heeds God, not you. Now you can say whatever you want to say, but I'm just telling you scripturally it's not right. For example, in Psalm 91 verse 11, He shall give His angels charge over you. It's interesting, the Bible does not say, and you will give your angels charge. They're not your angels. They are His angels and He gives them charge, meaning He tells them what's up. He tells them what to do. He commands His angels. They are His army and He's the commander of the Lord's army. God's angels are not your employees. God's angels are not your servants. Even though they're sent to minister to you, they are not your to command. He shall give His angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. Now, this is the big one. Guys, this is going to blow you away. Jesus was actually the commander of the Lord's armies. Jesus was actually, Jesus is fully God and fully man. I want you to see what happens in the garden. He says in Matthew 26 verse 53, Or do you not think that I cannot now pray to my Father and He will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? Jesus, didn't you hear a teaching that you can actually command angels? Jesus, you don't need to pray to your Father. You can just tell the 12 legions of angels, Hey, come in. Jesus doesn't say, Hey guys, don't you know I can command 12 legion of angels? He says, no, do you not know that I can pray to my Father? So pretty much what I'm trying to say is this. Angels are ministering spirits. They minister on your behalf, but they do not minister at your command. Let's say that again. Somebody dropped it in the chat. Angels minister on your behalf, but they do not minister on your behalf command. You don't command angels. You can command demons to go, but you don't command angels. Now, can you ask the Father to give you angels at that moment? Can you request your Father? Of course. Your Father has them pretty much standing ready to release them to help you. But the Scripture does not teach us that as Christians you can walk around and say, hey, I dispatch angels. Like, who do you think you are? <laughs> who do you think you are to command God's army? You are not God. These angels work for God, not for you. God made them and God says they are my servants. They are going to serve the Christians, but they are not commended, dispatched and ruled by Christians. It's not in the Bible. It's not in the practice of Jesus. I'm going to give you a few more verses because I, I see some of you are responding. You're like, wow, I've never saw it like that. Let me give you a few more verses to, to really kind of help you with that. Because I struggle with this myself. I've seen a lot of, even I know some people who are good um, ministers that I respect and you know, they would come out and like, hey, I, I released this angel. I'm telling my angel and I, and then like listening to some of people who are in new age and in witchcraft, that's exactly what they do. I'm not saying that these people, everybody who does that is in witchcraft. I'm not saying that. Don't hear what I'm not saying. What I'm saying is that they are ignorant because in the scripture, we don't see that. For example, 
Now, I understand there are some people saying, hey, I just hear a teaching how to dispatch angels. The best way to dispatch angels is to ask God to dispatch them. Angels are not at your disposal to dispatch them. Angels answer to God and you can ask your father because they work for his father, for the father. Like book of Acts chapter 12 verse 5, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Interesting. Peter is in prison, you would think the early church would dispatch angels. You don't see one mention of dispatching of angels. You see prayer, 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 prayer to the Father and God dispatches angels. Jesus never told us to dispatch angels. He told us to pray to the Father. A lot of you guys, you listen to too much New Age and you pray very little. A lot of people who teach on dispatching angels and we're going to commend angels, we're going to tell angels, you guys, this stuff is borderline dangerous. The Bible doesn't teach us. Jesus never taught that. He never practiced that. Disciples did not practice that. We need to teach people to pray. We need people teach people to get on their knees and do what Jesus did, do what Moses did, do what Daniel did, do what the early church did. Peter goes to jail. They're not dispatching angels. They are praying, God, release Peter. God, send your angels. God, we ask you for that. And guess what happens? God sends an angel. The church did not command Peter's angels. They did not dispatch angels. They prayed to God. I'm going to give you one more verse. Psalm 103 verse 20. Bless the Lord, you His angels who excel in strength, who do His Word, heeding the voice of His Word. Have you noticed that? You will not find one verse. Listen to me, maybe some of you are um, the charismaniacs. Listen to me very carefully. You will not find one verse. What the Bible says like this. Bless the Lord, all His angels who excel in strength, who do the Word of what the Christians tell them to do and who heed the voice of the saints. Angels are ministering spirits to the saints, but they are not taking orders from the saints. In fact, Jesus even taught us to pray to the Father, not even pray to Him in His name. He never told us to pray to angels, dispatch angels, command angels, tell angels where to go. Now, can you ask the Father to release angels when you are doing deliverance? Of course. Um, Moses says that's possible. Jesus says, I can ask the Father to dispatch angels. Early church, ask God so that He will deliver Peter and He sent angels. You can do that, but you can't go bust around with angels. This is not new age. This is new life, people. And in new life as Christians, we don't command angels. We talk to God and God commands angels because they work for Him. All right. So seven ways angels minister. So we kind of mentioned first that I wanted to lay that as a foundation. We don't dispatch them. We simply pray to God and He dispatches them. So seven ways that angels minister. Number one is angels minister worship. In Luke chapter 2 verse 13 and 14, it talks about angels giving God praise at the birth of Christ in front of shepherds. We also see that angels are worshiping God in book of Revelation, but they are not to be worshipped. And we also see in Psalm 148 verse 2, it says angels, all His angels praise Him. So angels are into the ministry of worship. And I think that this is something we all should learn about angels, that we can copy angels in this regard. We should worship God just like angels do. We should join with angels to worship God. When an angel shows up, you shouldn't worship an angel no matter how majestic and marvelous that angel is. Why? Because we as Christians, we worship God. He is not created. He is a creator and angels are created beings. That's why when Satan offered to Jesus and said, worship me and Jesus says, no, 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 you are created angel. You are not God. So angels ministry, first ministry is to release worship, is to give worship to God. 
as ministering spirits, they minister to God, they worship Him, they praise Him. Number two, what angels do is they minister the message. In fact, word angel means messenger. They minister the message. Angels, they gave law to Moses. Acts chapter 7 verse 38. Acts chapter 7 verse 53. Galatians chapter 3 verse 19. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 2. Angels delivered the law to the nation of Israel. Angels minister the message. Angels also called Gideon. They delivered the message to Gideon, the mighty man of valor. They released that message. They sent that message from God to Gideon. Angels also released and announced a lot of births in the Bible. Like they announced the birth of Samson. They announced the birth, an angel announced the birth of John the Baptist. They announced the birth of Jesus Christ. An angel brought a message to Cornelius of how to find Peter. An angel also was flying in Revelation chapter 14 verse 6 proclaiming the gospel. Now this, this might come as a shock to some people. But did you know that angels can proclaim the gospel? Do you know that it says that in Revelation chapter 14 verse 6 that the angel was flying and proclaiming the gospel? In fact, angels can carry a message. That's why Paul says in Galatians 1 verse 8, he says, But if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, that means it's possible for an angel to preach the gospel. You may say, no, we're only called to preach the gospel. Yes, but angels are ministers and they minister messages. They bring messages. So angels can actually preach because they're ministering messages. Now, that is not their job to preach. The job to preach is ours. That's why when demons were going around saying, Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus says, shut up. No, you're not going to be preaching. My redeemed children will be evangelizing, not you demon. And the same thing is with angels. God does not want angels to go preaching, but they are ministering message. They're ministering the message. So they could be ministering the message of warning. They could be ministering the message of encouragement. They could be ministering the message. For example, an angel came to Paul and encouraged him during the night and says, Hey Paul, everything's going to be okay. You're going to get to Rome. Angels can bring a message. That's why an angel, a false angel brought a message to Joseph uh, Smith. A false angel brought a message to Muhammad. A good angel brought a message to Moses because m angels can minister a message. Number three, angels are ministers of protection. So not only they can minister a message, not only they minister worship, but they also can minister protection. We see that in the Bible, in Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12, He shall give His angels charge over you to keep you in all His ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. In fact, the first mention of angel was a cherubim. He was protecting Garden of Eden. Now, because people were defiled, He was protecting a place. But I believe that Lord assigns angels to protect people, not places. But He was protecting a place. Today, God is protecting you and I because we are Christians. He's assigning angels. He's sending angels to protect us. We also see that angels, Archangel Michael, is assigned to protect the nation of Israel. In Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 it says the following, At the time Michael shall stand up the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. So Archangel is watching mainly over the nation of Israel. Now this is where I'm going to um, kind of attack another little myth. And this is the guardian angels, that every person has a guardian angel. <laughs> the Bible actually does not teach that. Angels do minister protection and guard God's people. But you don't have an angel as a guardian angel. I'm going to give you the verse where everybody gets this idea from. And the verse is Matthew 18.10. It says the following, Take heed that you do not despise one of the little ones. For I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Now, 
I know that in new age, I know that in the world, the idea that everybody has their little angel that kind of follows you everywhere is very prevalent. Now, it is not in the Bible. The Bible says, don't despise the little ones. And then it says this, because their angel, okay, now at first it seems like, okay, man, they have, they have their own angel, but listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. Let the Bible explain the Bible. Because their angel, now you would think your guardian angel is right with you, walking with you everywhere, watching over you. But look what supposedly guardian angel does. Their angels, in heaven they're not on earth so the guardian angel that everybody thinks they have is actually not on earth and angels are not present everywhere at the same time they're not god so they can't be at two places at one time so this little ones who have angels these angels are not on earth they're in heaven. And guess the second thing I want you to notice, these angels do not have their eyes fixed on the little ones. They have their eyes fixed on the face of the Father. Let me read that again. It says, take heed that you do not despise one of the little ones, for I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. So what does that mean? That means that the guardian angel, quote unquote, is not with you. They are in heaven and they're not watching over you. They are facing the Father's face only. Why? Waiting for God the Father to commend them, whether to come and help you or to send them on the assignment. I really want to get this one point across. Angels are not fixated with you and me. Angels are not obsessed with us. They're obsessed with the Father. Their eyes are on the Father. Your guardian, if you think you have a guardian angel, okay, let's just imagine that you do. Because let's just take this one verse, your angel, <laughs> he's not with you. He's with the Heavenly Father. And he's looking at the Father's face. He's staring at the face of the Father. He's not looking at you constantly watching, what are you doing? And then people say, oh, don't be speeding because your angel can't keep up. <laughs> I'm sorry, your angel is not even with you in the car. Your angel is in heaven. If you have one, it's in heaven. And I don't believe that everybody has an angel. I believe that God the Father has billions, gazillions of angels. And they're all looking at His face. And then He sends them when it's needed to protect us when we need it. God doesn't assign angels to every person who is born. Not one scripture will say that in the Bible. God gives you the Holy Spirit when you're born again. God doesn't give you an angel when you were born. I know it's cute. I'm sorry. Okay. I know it's new age. Oh, you got a little angel. Every person has a little angel. I know it's cute and stuff. So, but to believe in that is equivalent to believe in Santa as well. We do not have our own angels that come with us every single time or when we're born. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches only one time where it says the whole thing that we have our angels technically, but they are in heaven. They're not here and they're watching the Father. They're not watching us. Why? Because they're living to do the Father's will, not what I want. They're not watching over me. They're watching on the Father's face. And when He tells them to do something, then they do it. If He dispatches them to protect me for this season, they will protect me. If He does not dispatch them, they will move because they hearken at God's voice, not my commands. And I can scream till I turn blue. <laughs> Angels are not going to move, okay? Angels move at His command, not at my command. So they are in heaven, they're not on earth. They're watching the face of the Father, not my face. And they're waiting for Father to command them to help. But so these angels, they're protecting, but not protecting like I think they're protecting. They're kind of like assigned like this bodyguard or like this protective detail that the Father just assigned for the rest of my life. No, He sends them seasonally. He sends them when needed. It's not a permanent assignment that angels have to protect me all the time. It's when it's needed, when I'm in danger or I'm about to come up and some kind of a tragic thing or some kind of an attack comes on me and the Father dispatches His angels and they protect and they fulfill their assignment and then they go back. 
to look at his face again because it's the face of Heavenly Father that they behold. Not my face. <laughs> and I don't want them to behold my face. <laughs> Number four, angels are ministers of deliverance. Psalm 34 verse 7, it says, The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. So the Lord uses angels as deliverance angels. He sends them to deliver. We see angels delivered Lot out of Sodom, Genesis 19, 15. Angels redeemed Jacob, Genesis 48, verses 16. It's actually amazing because Jacob says this. He says, the angel who redeemed me from all the evil. Genesis 48 verse 16. So the angel of the Lord redeemed Jacob from a lot of evil. So some, you know, when you're reading Jacob's story, you see all this trouble he goes through. And I guess there's been an angel from God that's been delivering Jacob, redeeming Jacob. The angel of God protected three, three Hebrew boys. In fact, the king said, Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be God of Shidrach, Meshach and Abednego who sent his angel. <laughs> it's interesting. It doesn't say, blessed be God who assigned their angels to be with them. No, God sent. Have you noticed? It doesn't say that Shidrach, Meshach and Abednego had an angel with them all their life. No, when they got into the fire, God dispatched an angel who's been looking at the Father's face. Angels look at the Father's face. And when we get in trouble, God the Father says, go. Go, 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 go now, go, 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 go. And they go quickly into the furnace of fire. They go quickly into our troubled situation. They go quickly into our problem and they rescue us because the Father sent them. Same thing happened with Daniel in uh, the lion's den. God sent an angel. That means that the angel was not with Daniel all his life. That means the angel was not following Daniel 24-7. This whole idea that I wake up with an angel. No, no, my friend, you wake up with the Holy Ghost. You, you don't, and you have the Holy Spirit, it's better than an angel, okay? You have the presence of God living inside of you, not a presence of an angel. Angel doesn't follow you 24-7. Otherwise, the Daniel would not say, God sent his angel. He would simply say, oh, I've had an angel all my life. He just simply decided to wake up today. No, 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 my friend. God sends his angel when you're in trouble, when you need protection and when you need deliverance. But God has indwelled you with his Holy Spirit who never leaves you and never forsakes you. Jesus says, I will never leave you and never forsake you. Jesus never said, the angel that I assigned to you, your guardian angel will never leave you and never forsake you. It's just not in the Bible. The angel also killed 185 people. That's a lot of people and that's one angel in 1st, 2nd Kings 1935. The angel also broke Peter out of jail twice, meaning these angels are like, they're pretty powerful. Peter goes to jail, church prays, God sends an angel and the angel goes in through the locks and through the walls and gets Peter out. Now, angels minister deliverance at God's command. That's why during deliverance, when you have a stubborn demon or you're dealing with something difficult, you can actually ask the Father to dispatch angels. You can ask the Father to send angels. Now remember, we're not dispatching, we're not commending, we are asking the Father to send angels. Demons roam around to destroy people. God's angels are on the assignment to deliver people. Demons wander without purpose. God's angels are always on assignment. Let me say that again. Demons wander without purpose. Demons are like wander looking around where can they find a place to inhabit. God's angels don't wander around. They're not like looking for something to do, something to destroy. God's angels are always on point and always on assignment. And when they finish their assignment, they go back to behold the face of the Father. That's what the Bible teaches. At least that's what Jesus taught us. Number five, angels are ministers of God's provision. Matthew 4 11 it says when the devil left him behold angels came and ministered to him. Angel helped Hagar to find water Genesis 16 7. Angel actually Israel ate angels food Psalm 78 verses 23, 24 and 25. Angels provided food for Elijah 1 Kings 19 verses 5, 6 and 7. Jesus was strengthened by an angel in the garden of Gethsemane Luke chapter 22 verse 43. An angel encouraged Paul when he was a prisoner, Acts chapter 27, verse 23. So angels are ministers of worship. They minister the message. 
they minister protection. They minister deliverance. Number five, they minister provision. Number six, and some of you are going to like this, angels minister marriage. Now, Genesis 24 verse 7 says the following, The Lord God of heaven, who took me out of my father's house and from the land of my family, who spoke to me and swore to me, saying to your descendants, I will give this land. Can you, can you see this again? It says this, He will send His angel before you and you shall take a wife for my son from there. Again and again and again. I'm going to be a broken record today. That God says, Abraham says this, he says, The Lord God who delivered me, set me free, called me, da 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 da. He said, He will send His angel and He will help you to find a wife for my son. So I believe that God can dispatch angels to help you find a spouse. Come on somebody, drop that little love in the, in the, in the chat. If you believe that next year is going to be your year, you're single and ready to mingle and say, Lord, send me an angel to connect me with someone who I need to be with. Send me an angel to connect me to my Boaz. Lord, send me an angel to connect me to my Rebecca. Lord, send me an angel. Oh, I see a lot of hearts. There must be, must be a lot of single people. Lord, I just ask you right now, the same way you send an angel to help this guy. We don't know his name. I think his name is Abim. Uh, his name is, uh, we actually don't know, El Eliezer in Abraham's house. Lord, we ask you the same way you send an angel to help Eliezer to find Rebecca for Isaac. That you will help every single person that is watching this broadcast and re-watching this broadcast. Lord, send that angel to help them get married. Send that angel to help them find their spouse. Send that angel to help them find the person that they will settle with, the person that they will live with. Lord, release your Father God in the name of Jesus Christ. Release your ministering angels that they will bring divine connections in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Come on somebody, if you believe in that prayer right now, the next year is going to be your year of divine connection and God will send His angels to connect you to the right person. Come on, drop that ring emoji right now in the chat. If you are re-watching it, do exactly the same thing. If you're just tuning in or re-watching, don't forget to hit thumbs up. As you're clicking on that ring right now, hit thumbs up. Let me know that you are still with me. Number seven is angels are ministers of judgment. They are ministers of judgment. In Revelation 20 verses 1 and all the way till 3, we see that God's angel had a key to the bottomless pit and he bound the devil and then he threw him in there. I mean like just an average angel came in and took that devil and put him into the bottomless pit. Angels destroyed Sodom, Genesis 19 verses 13. Genesis, uh, also angels opposed Balaam, Numbers 22. We see that angel actually took his sword out and started attacking Israel because they counted people wrongly. King David saw that and then he offered the sacrifice and the angel put his sword back in to his sheep and so then we see angel killed Herod Antipas in Acts chapter 12 verse 23. We see seven angels had seven trumpets in Revelation chapter 8. We see that Jesus will come back with his angels. We see that angels will gather everyone for the final judgment in Matthew 13 verse 41. And we see that there will be seven angels with seven bowls in Revelation chapter 15 verses 6 all the way till verses 8. Pretty much what I'm trying to say is this, um, angels are not necessarily like, hey, what's up, yo? Like they're executors of judgment, okay? They are God's executors of judgment. God executes His judgment through angels. And they're coming back with Him and they're going to do a lot of cleaning and cleansing on this earth. So, Amen. Now, so we mentioned seven types of angels. We mentioned seven ministries of angels. And lastly, and I'm ready to finish this live stream. The last thing I'm going to share with you is 10 interesting facts about angels. I'm going to go fast through this. And I know some of you were saying, man, slow down, Vlad. We will have the notes in the description on our YouTube channel. So for those of you, you can go in and copy the notes and then um, 
you can get them. But now let's go through the last 10 interesting facts about angels. My first most interesting fact about angel angels is this is number one they are fascinated with the gospel. Mm, man it gives me goosebumps. They're fascinated with the gospel. Let's read the verse. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 12. If our mods can drop the scripture into the 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 12. To them it was revealed that not to themselves but to us they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven things which angels desire to look into. Wow! So angels, they desire to look into this. Like they have this area they want to look into. They want to like have a sneak peek. You know what that area is? It's the gospel. Wow! It's how holy God takes rebels, people with dark hearts, broken lives, who don't want to do anything with Him and He reconciles them through the blood of His Son and makes them into this human family. Like angels wonder, how is that possible? Like, wow! They are fascinated with the gospel. Angels look into, I like what one guy said. I don't know who said it, but he said this. The church is the university of angels where every believer is a professor. Mm, come on somebody, mic drop right there. The church is the university of angels where every believer is the professor. Man, I'm going to say that again. The church is the university of angels. Angels know so much. They're so smart. They're so powerful. But when it comes to the gospel, zero. They don't know what it's like to be forgiven. They don't know what it's like to be indwelled by God. They don't know, they don't know what it's like to be saved. They don't know what it's like to be born again. And they go to a university where you and I are the professors. When we share our testimony, when we talk about the gospel, when we talk about Jesus, when we talk about how He has redeemed us, they look into that. They, they're fascinated by that. Like Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 12, I've read and he says that, that the angels, they desire to look into that. So crazy. So good. Wow. Wow. Man, I just want to take a moment and just praise Him right now. Thank You, Lord. Thank You, Lord, for salvation. Thank You, Lord, for salvation. The church is the university of angels where every believer is the professor. Number two, second fascinating, interesting fact about angels is they love seeing people saved. Angels love evangelism. In fact, if angels could, they would have preached to every person. But the assignment to preach was given to us. Angels love evangelism. You know how I know that? Because when people get saved, angels rejoice. The Bible doesn't say that angels rejoice when you get a husband. The Bible doesn't say that angels rejoice when you get married. The Bible also does not say when angels rejoice when you get a breakthrough. The Bible says that angels rejoice when somebody gets saved, meaning they love people getting saved. In fact, when Jesus was born, they were singing and praising God. Why? Because the Savior was born. Now salvation personally, like you would think angels should get jealous. Why? Because look, I mean God is having this human family. God already has a spiritual family because angels are actually referred to as the sons of God in Job. And they are part of the hosts of heaven. So 
you would think angels would be like, oh, this is not cool. You know, like they would feel jealous a little bit that God has this other family that he is going like literally he's going, he's bending backwards to rescue and save them. But the Bible says not only angels are fascinated, they're like, man, we're very curious. How's this gospel? W what is this God doing? This is incredible. This is awesome. We want to learn. And then angels love when people get saved. They love when people get saved. They rejoice when one person and get saved. They throw a party because they know how much it matters to their father and because they're constantly beholding his face. They're beholding his face. They're beholding his face and they see that the people, they matter to the father. And so anytime one person turns their uh, back and begins to run to the father, angels like, yeah, they throw a party. They rejoice when people get saved. Number three, angels don't get married. Now angels in heaven don't get married. That's in Matthew 22 verse 30. Number four, there are many of angels. So angels are many. That's number four. The Bible talks about the host of angels. Luke 2, 4, 13. The Bible talks about 12 legions of angels. That's in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 53. The Bible also talks about 10,000 times 10,000 angels in Revelation chapter 5 verse 11. The Bible talks about countless thousands of angels in Hebrews 12, 22. So pretty much the Bible talks about there's a lot of angels, okay? If you think there's just few of them, there's a lot of angels. Fact, interesting fact number five, angels can perform physical feats or physical acts. For example, one angel moved the stone. And so they're very strong. They can actually, you know, one angel killed 185 people. Uh, one angel came and just moved the stone. So angel can accomplish physical feats. I heard one guy who actually had an angel showed up and teach him how to make fireplaces. I met this guy's uh, granddaughter in Ukraine. I heard of his story because when I was a young kid, my parents took me to be prayed by him. And the angel, the Lord would send an angel to him and he would pretty much show up and uh, teach him. One time he taught him how to make money by building chimneys. And so the angels, you know, they're pretty smart. They're very intellectual. They're celestial beings. Um, they're not like us. You know, they're way higher in regard to intellect, power and everything. And so they're um, very, very smart and they can do physical acts. And we see that they move the stone uh, for Jesus. Number six is angels will most likely usher us into heaven when we die. At least we see that in Luke chapter 16 verse 22 with Lazarus when he died. Angels have uh, become ushers for Lazarus. And so this is so amazing guys. You know every church has ushers that guides people to take their seats. You and I, we have our own ushers that the Lord sends us to pick us up when we die and take us to paradise. So that that, you know, small transition is not scary but you have angels that will escort you. That's incredible. Uh, number seven is angels usually show up in man-like appearance. The Bible says in Genesis 18, 16 that uh, men came to Sodom and Gomorrah. They looked like normal men. They did not have wings. They did, not, they did not have like these scary faces. They didn't shine brightly. They were just normal men. In fact, uh, people in Sodom and Gomorrah didn't think anything of them. In Judges 13, 6, we see that the mom of uh, Samson, she thought it was just a man of God that showed up. So he didn't look different than the normal uh, human uh, male face. In Luke chapter 16 verse 5, we see that women when they came in, they saw a young man clothed in long white robes sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. So angels, sometimes they show up with a normal appearance and sometimes they come, their face is shining, their clothes are white as shining. One thing we don't see in the Bible ever is an angel that came in a female form or an angel that came in the form of a child. You will never see that. In fact, every reference to a word angel is always masculine, not feminine. Now this does not mean that, you know, angels are males, not, uh, not females. Ma angels don't have necessarily a gender, but they do show up mainly in the scripture as men. What does that mean? I don't know. Number eight, Angels have their own language. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1, Paul says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. So people say, well, uh, you know, tongues, not really. Uh, tongues are different than the um, tongues of angels. Because tongues are, is the spiritual tongue, but the um, 
tongue of angels is different. So they have, they can speak our tongue, but we know according to 1 Corinthians 13, 1, they have their own way they communicate. Number nine is angels have their own food. Now they don't need to eat because they draw their source from their Father, from their Creator. Um, but in Psalm 78 verses 24 it says, He rained down manna on them to eat and gave them the bread of heaven. They ate angels' food. So Israel ate angels' food. So God gave them bread from heaven and then guess what they ate? Angels' food. So even though they don't need to eat, they can eat, excuse me, and they have their own food. In fact, in Revelation chapter 2.17, it says that those who overcome will be eating from a hidden manna. That means there's a particular food you have in, you can have in heaven that angels eat. Man, that would be so fascinating to eat their food. Like, I wonder what their food sounds or tastes like. That would be so, um, so interesting. And number 10, I can't believe this has been an hour and 20 minutes already. Number 10 is they work in secret. Angels many times are working behind the scenes and they're not known to you. God chooses at times to make it visible their activity, but typically they're not visible. For example, 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike these people I prayed with blindness. So I love this as well that when Elisha was surrounded, protected by God's angels because he hit a pretty rough patch. You know, people came against him and he's aware that they are there protecting him. But his servant is completely oblivious. So it's possible to have angels assigned by God for you in that situation and you're completely oblivious that you're being protected. You actually don't realize you're not alone. And sometimes God will open your spiritual eyes and you will see you're not alone. You have angels beside you. But even when He doesn't, you can trust the heart of your Father. He loves you so much. He gave His Spirit to live inside of you. He gave His Son to die for you. He constantly, His eyes are to and through the, through the earth. He watches over you constantly. His angels that are looking at the face of the Father are waiting for the Father to give Him a sign, to give them a go, to go and protect defend, deliver, kill or strike or whatever the Father will tell them to do. But in this regard, we see that Elisha, he's, he's praying and he said, Lord, strike these people with blindness. And I believe that angels right away pretty much hit him with blindness. And But angels were there. The servant just never see them, never seen them. How do you know that you have encountered angels? Let me give you just a few little um, suggestions. When a stranger prevents serious injury and mysteriously disappears, sometimes that could be an angel. It doesn't have to have shining eyes. It could be an angel who prevents serious injury and mysteriously disappears. How do you know if you encountered an angel? when the white clothed being is seen and is gone. How do you know when you encountered an angel? When you're left with a, pe a feeling of peace and assurance of God's presence. How do you know you've encountered an angel? When you experience supernatural protection that's confirmed by others or some kind of a supernatural activity that other people testified and you're not aware of anything physical taking place. A lot of times when missionaries will testify that they've seen some kind of an angel or protection over the family. How do you know you encountered an angel? And this is pretty common in churches. When you hear a choir of angels type of worship as you engaged in worship with believers. So as you're worshiping, you're beginning to hear 
another choir sing. And this choir is a celestial choir. Shepherds did that. They started to hear the, the choir, but they started to see, hear the angels say. So sometimes during worship you can experience that. It's incredible. Another way that you can experience an angel is when you're going through times of loneliness, challenges and difficulties and you feel the arms or wings touching you or like a blanket, like somebody is wrapping his hands around you. That actually could be angels of God. God doesn't have to let you see them but you will feel the love of the Father because they will minister the love of the Father. They will minister the comfort of the Father. The same way the Lord ministered comfort to Paul when he was on the boat and said, don't be afraid. You will be okay. You won't die. And has, guess who gave him that comfort? The angel that the Lord has sent him. Maybe you're going through that tonight. You know Christmas season. Why did I decide to talk about angels? Because they showed up when Jesus was born. And maybe you're a shepherd. Maybe you're going through a challenging. Maybe you just feel like you're normal. God's angels have nothing to do with you. Why not? They behold the face of your Father. And He wants to release them, dispatch them, to remind you that you're loved. To remind you that God the Father loves you. The angel showed up to Joseph and said, don't be afraid, take Mary as your wife. The angel showed up also and said, you know, leave because somebody's chasing the child. You know, the angels were also warned, they warned the wise men. So we see that in the dreams, the angels can show up and they can show up in the physical and speak, guide and direct. So I want to encourage you today. Most likely not once and not twice, you've experienced the angel of God. And probably not even once or twice, you have had the angel show up. You probably just didn't realize it was the angel. And maybe in the future when we meet with the Lord, He'll be able to give us the tape and He'll be able to tell us, hey, this was my angels. This actually was not a human being. This was my angel that took you off of that road, who had that conversation with you. And for us, it doesn't matter. We don't need to know all of that because their goal is, is to be anonymous. Their goal is not to draw attention to themselves. Their goal is not so you can give them credit because in Colossians it says the worship of angels is demonic. So they are there to worship the Father. They're there to encourage you to worship the Father. But they are not here for their attention. Amen. So, I hope this was a blessing to you. I'm not going to recap because this is going to take me longer to recap than the whole live stream it was. But I just want to say thank you for watching and let's pray together. Let's ask the Father if you are in the cave spiritually, if you're like Hagar, you're in the wilderness struggling financially, if lions are devouring you and maybe you're burning in the furnace of affliction, Perhaps you're like shepherds, you're just kind of enjoying your job and life. Maybe you're scared of what the future holds. Can we ask the Father right now to, to send His angels? Can we ask the Father right now to, to send deliverance, to minister comfort, to minister hope in the way that He chooses to? In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for every viewer I pray for every person that is right now watching me on live stream. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I thank you for your presence. Lord, I thank you that nothing is impossible to you. Lord, I thank you that you are the same God yesterday, today and forever the same. Lord, I thank you that you are the God of Abraham, you're the God of Isaac and you are the God of Jacob. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness right now. Lord, I thank you for your goodness right now. Lord, I thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for all of my sin. Lord, I thank you that you sent Jesus Christ to die for all of my unrighteousness. 
Lord, I pray that you will wash us with your blood right now. Lord, I pray that you will forgive us of our sins, Lord. As we remember Christ in Christmas, Lord, I pray that you will forgive all of our sins. I pray for those that are backslid, for those who are in new age, those who are in deception, those who are maybe in false religion of Jehovah Witnessism or Mormonism or Islam or Buddhism or atheism. I pray for those who walked away from local church, they abandoned their faith and maybe they're going through a very challenging time or perhaps you're drawing them right now and your angels are working behind the scenes to lure them into this live stream. And as they're watching and they're listening, Lord, and they're not what they're supposed to be with you, I pray, Jesus who was born 2,000 years ago to save people from their sins, I pray this Jesus right now will save the people that are watching from their sins. Just pray this out loud with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I am a sinner. Just say this with me. Say, please forgive me of all my sin and wash me with your precious blood. Say this with me, I believe you are the Son of God who died on a cross for all my sin. Say this with me, say, I repent of all my sin and I place my trust in what Jesus did on the cross. I receive Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior. I receive Jesus as my King in Jesus' name. And I believe that I am forgiven I am saved in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Right now let me pray for you that God will release His blessing. Father in the name of Jesus I pray for those like Hagar going through a wilderness struggling financially. Release your grace. Lord I pray for those right now who are maybe like Joseph they need direction. They're in a relationship and they don't know whether to be with this person or not to be with that person. Lord, send your direction, send your messenger to them. Lord, I pray the same way that you send a wife to Isaac. By sending an angel, send that angel, Lord, to help them find a spouse. Lord, I pray for those who need deliverance that you will send your angel to bring deliverance. Lord, I pray for those who are believing for their family to be saved that you will send your angels to guide them towards Christ, towards salvation. Lord, I pray for those that need protection right now. They're facing something tragic or they're facing something scary and they're scared. Like Paul in the boat, maybe they're terrified. Lord, send your angels to bring hope and encouragement. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord for ministering spirits, for ministering angels that you have released, releasing and sending our way in Jesus' name. Amen.